everyone. God bless you. Merry Christmas Eve. Welcome to the Good Book Project. Here at this channel in our chronological Bible in a Year video podcast to the glory of our Lord, we have reached day 358. Today is Sunday, Christmas Eve, December the 24th in the year of our Lord, 2023. Yesterday for day 357, we finished the book of Hebrews. And for today, day 358, we jump back into a letter of Paul written to Timothy for the second time. We will be reading Paul's second letter to Timothy. I will pray us into the word for today, and we will get right into it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before your throne today with honor and thanksgiving. Thank you that in everything that you do is for our benefit and for our good. And we thank you because just for one more Sunday in your year 2023, you've given us the ability to not only read your word for ourselves, but to read your word for others. And we thank you for that. And as we go through Paul's second letter to Timothy today, we ask for heavenly wisdom. We ask for guidance and we ask for understanding to really understand what the scriptures say, what your word says. And we ask for all of these things in the powerful name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. For today, day 358, we now go back into Paul's letters to read Paul's second letter to Timothy. And we're going to do this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Word of God reads, Paul's second letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy 1. Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, according to the promise of the life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve as my forefathers did, with a pure conscience, how unceasing in my memory of you in my petitions night and day is my memory of you in my petitions night and day, longing to see you, remembering your tears, that I may be filled with joy, having been reminded of the sincere faith that is in you, which lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother Eunice, and I, and I am persuaded, and you also. For this cause I remind you that you should stir up the gift of God which is in you the laying on of my hands. For God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. Therefore, don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but endure hardship for the good news according to the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before times eternal but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the good news. For this I was appointed as a preacher, an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this cause I also suffer these things. Yet I am not ashamed, for I know him whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to guard that which I have committed to him against that day. Hold the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me, in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This you know, that all who are in Asia turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord grant mercy to the house of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me, and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me diligently and found me. The Lord grant to him to find the Lord's mercy in that day. And in how many things he served at Ephesus, you know very well. Second Timothy 2 You, therefore, my child, be strengthened in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things which you have heard from me amongst many witnesses, commit the same things to the faithful men, to faithful men, who will be able to teach others also. 
You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier on duty entangles himself in the affairs of life, but he may, be, he may please him who enrolled him as a soldier. Also, if anyone competes in athletics, he isn't crowned unless he has competed by the rules. The farmer who labors must be the first to get a share of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, of the offspring of David, according to my good news, in which I suffer hardship to the point of chains as a criminal. But God's word isn't chained. Therefore I endure all things for the chosen one's sake, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. For if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. For he can't deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them in the sight of the Lord that they don't argue about words to no profit, to the subverting of those who hear. Give diligence to present yourself approved by God, a workman who doesn't need to be ashamed, properly handling the word of truth. But shun empty chatter, for it will go further in ungodliness, and those words will consume like gangrene, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, men who have erred concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past and overthrowing the faith of some. However, God's firm foundation stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from unrighteousness. Now in a large house, they are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of clay. Some are for honor and some for dishonor. If anyone therefore purges himself from these, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and suitable for the master's use, prepared for every good work. Flee from youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But refuse foolish and ignorant questionings, knowing that they generate strife. The Lord's servant must not quarrel, but be gentle towards all, able to teach, patient, in gentleness correcting those who oppose him. Perhaps God may give them repentance leading to a full knowledge of the truth, and they may recover themselves out of the devil's snare, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Second Timothy 3. But know this, that in the last days grievous times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, fierce, not lovers of good, traitors, headstrong, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding a form of godliness but having denied its power. Turn away from these also. For some of these are people who creep into houses and take captive gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Even as Janes and Jambres opposed Moses, so these also opposed the truth. Men corrupted in mind, who concerning the faith are rejected. But they will proceed no further, for their folly will be evident to all men, as theirs also came to be. But you followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, steadfastness, persecutions, and sufferings, those things that happened to me at Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. I endured those persecutions. The Lord delivered me out of them all. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 
but you remain in the things which you have learnt and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learnt them. From infancy, you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Every scripture is God-breathed and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that each person who belongs to God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Second Timothy 4 I command you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be urgent in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all patience and teaching. For the time will come when they will not listen to the sound doctrine, but having itching ears, will heap up for themselves teachers after their own lusts, and will turn away their ears from the truth and turn away to fables. But you be sober in all things. Suffer hardship, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. For I am already being offered, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness is stored up for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day and not to me only, but also to all those who have loved his appearing. Be diligent to come to me soon, for Demas left me, having loved this present world, and went to Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for service. But I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus when you come, and the books, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did much evil to me. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him, for he greatly opposed our words. At my first defense, no one came to help me, but all left me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and that all the Gentiles might hear. So I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Prisca and Aquila, and the house of Onesiphorus. Erastus remained at Corinth, but I left Trophimus, Admiltus, sick. Be diligent to come before winter. Eubulus salutes you, as do Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers. The Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. And thank you, God, for your holy word. And with that, another one of Paul's letters is complete and you see him and the personality that he has when he is speaking to timothy speaking as a father to a son a spiritual father to a son reminding him of all things concerning the faith to keep the faith as he did to teach everything the way he taught to beware of false teachers to proclaim the good news of jesus christ and all that is to come and in this letter we see paul encouraging timothy to teach and proclaim the true gospel that he had learned from Paul and the other apostles, and to keep all of the things that he said, spreading it out, the true word of God. And we could see how personal Paul was with Timothy in the way that he is speaking to him in this letter. So I pray as we read this letter, there are many, many things going on in this letter about theology, about teaching, about how to conduct yourself as a Christian, how to live with other Christians how to gently correct when things are needed, and much more. So read this book, listen to this podcast episode a couple of times, make bullet points to see everything that is being taught in Paul's second letter to Timothy. And with that, day 358 is complete, and I'm so happy you were able to make it out today to hear the Word of God. 
I will pray us out of the word for today, and we will go throughout the rest of our day. Father God, we just come before your throne once again in the mighty name of Jesus, and we just thank you for giving us the ability to go through your word. We thank you that in your goodness and in your mercy over our lives, you've given us your holy word that we could live our lives based off of, your perfect word, and we thank you for that. And Lord, as we go throughout the rest of today, December the 24th, Christmas Eve 2023, we dedicate this day to you, and we ask you to bless it. And we ask that in all things we are ready to share the gospel, the reason why we are celebrating Christmas Eve today, the reason of the good news, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us in everything that we do. We are a reflection of you, the one true God. We ask for your protective hand over our lives and cover us under your mercies as you always do. And we ask for all these things in the beautiful and powerful name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. Day 359 is tomorrow for Christmas Day, December the 25th, and I can't wait for you to return for it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace. Merry Christmas Eve. <laughs>